Gamage gives us all the opportunity to live life in a slightly different, fuller, and more aware way. The sentiments behind the words of Miriam Beagle, former director of ASU Gamage, have been echoed by so many since opening its doors in 1964. This is my first time. I'm super excited. My daughter's eight. She loves musicals. The productions at Gamage are as good, if not better, than Manhattan. Gamage is the door to the cultural arts in our community. Uh, we're very proud of, of having in this beautiful place a building like this and support uh, Gamage that really puts on some amazing shows. The iconic Frank Lloyd Wright Performing Arts Center at Arizona State University has been the heart of the arts in the Valley of the Sun, bringing countless entertainers, artists, and dignitaries to Tempe during its first 50 years. In 1957, Arizona State College President Grady Gamage had a vision to create a distinct university auditorium on the campus of what would soon be Arizona State University. He contacted close friend and famed architect Frank Lloyd Wright to assist with the project. As luck would have it, a twist of fate halfway around the world would lead ASU Gamage looking the way it does today. In May of that year, Frank Lloyd Wright was about to embark on one of his most ambitious projects to date. Wright had been invited to Iraq by the Iraq Development Board as part of their desire to modernize Baghdad. The Development Board didn't invite only Wright to Iraq, but invited many of the world's most acclaimed architects, including Italian Gio Ponte, Swiss-French Le Corbusier, and German Walter Gropius. All of the architects had specific projects they were invited to build and help foster the modernization of Baghdad. The development board wanted to put to use the new wealth created during the Iraq oil boom of the 1950s. Wright had been charged to bring the city a grand opera house. The opera house was to be built in downtown Baghdad, but while flying over the city, Wright spotted an island on the Tigris River and became fascinated with the site. It was known as Pig Island. While meeting with King Faisal, Wright asked to move the project to this island and was pleased when the king declared, the island, Mr. Wright, is yours. Wright renamed this undeveloped site the Isle of Edina, a reference to Iraq's ancient past as a possible site of the biblical Garden of Eden, which was located in Iraq. Wright believed that for his design to be successful, it must not only reflect the environment it is in, but must also reflect the history and culture of Iraq. Baghdad had been built by Al-Mansur in the late 8th century. Al-Mansur's Baghdad was a circular city and the center of Islamic knowledge, culture, and trade. His successor, Harun al-Rashid, even inspired many of the protagonists in 1001 Nights commonly known in the West as Arabian Nights. It was very fitting that Wright would draw so much inspiration from Arabian Nights and that his design fused his unique style and modern materials with his vision of Al Rashid's Baghdad. The initial design of the Crescent Opera and Civic Auditorium, commonly referred to as the Baghdad Opera House, was enormously elaborate, with a gigantic spire, a magnificent dome, many pools and water features, as well as bridges across the Tigris River. The project was gargantuan in scale. The arch, which Wright described as a crescent rainbow, contained roundels depicting scenes from the Book of 1001 Nights. In additional allusions to the local culture, the building is topped with a statue of Aladdin, holding his lamp with a spire, which Wright intended to represent the sword of Muhammad. In addition to the opera house, Wright's plan called for botanical gardens, museums, art galleries, a grand bazaar, and on the north side of the island, a 300-foot statue of Harun al-Rashid, built of gilded sheet metal. Wright was so confident in his vision that he even designed a university campus on the island. 
The entire project was meant to reflect back to Al Rashid's circular Baghdad. However, in 1958, King Faisal II was assassinated during a military coup, and the project was never realized. Wright soon believed that the design prepared for the Opera House in Baghdad might just be perfect for the new project at ASU. While Frank Lloyd Wright was creating his vision and plan for Greater Baghdad, President Grady Gamage was busy building ASU. Gamage has long been considered the architect that built ASU. President Gamage saw the Arizona State Teachers College in Tempe transform into a college in 1945. After much more development and the creation of many programs, Gamage then led the hard-fought campaign for the growing Arizona State College to become a fully accredited university in 1958. When Gamage and Wright had the opportunity to sit down and talk about the president's vision for ASU, Frank Lloyd Wright told President Gamage, I believe it's time that ASU grow up and be like a university. You're missing the one thing that would tie a university together. That is an auditorium or a concert hall. I know the place where it should be built, Dr. Gamage, and if you will come with me right now, I'll show you. Gamage and Wright had walked the length and breadth of the campus that warm afternoon in 1957, seeking a site for a university auditorium that was yet only an improbable dream. Then Frank Lloyd Wright and his host, President Grady Gamage and Vice President Gilbert Cady, visited a 15-acre women's athletic field in the southwest corner of the campus. Wright took a liking to the athletic field and said, I believe this is the site. The structure should be circular in design, and yes, with outstretched arms saying, welcome to ASU. When the Baghdad project collapsed in 1958, Wright looked at the sketches and realized he had just the circular building for ASU's campus. Wright worked on transforming the design and sketches for the auditorium with mounting enthusiasm during the last two years of his life. But sadly, both Wright and Gamage died in 1959, neither living to see the transformation of the design to blueprints. After Wright's passing, his most trusted aide, William Wesley Peters, brought his plans to finished form with Taliesin Associated Architects. Peters and John Rattenberry, another apprentice, completed the design and oversaw the construction. The building's bold design is unmistakably Wright's and the building will go down in history as his last design and only public building in Arizona. Gamage and Wright's vision would become an iconic venue under the new direction of Peters and Rattenberry. On May 23, 1962, 11-year-old Grady Gamage Jr turned the first shovel full of earth at the official groundbreaking ceremony. He participated along with his mother, Catherine Gamage, Ogavana Lloyd Wright, the architect's widow, G. Homer Durham, Grady Gamage Sr.'s successor as ASU president, William Wesley Peters, chief architect of Taliesin Associated Architects, and building supervisor, John Rattenbury. It was a wonderful day for Arizona State to know that a Frank Lloyd Wright building was going to be a monument here to, to uh, arts and culture and to the great president that we had for so long. Uh, yes, I was there and I've been enjoying Gamage uh, uh, ever since then. It was a very important event. Uh, you know, and there were a lot of people there. Mrs. Wright was there and uh, uh, West Peters uh, was a beautiful occasion. The site, of course, is, was the best site on campus. Construction on the $2.46 million ASU Gamage took 25 months and was completed in September 1964, well ahead of the formal dedicatory events. The 3,000-seat performance hall offers three levels of seating, with the furthest seat only 115 feet from the stage. The acoustics are well balanced for unamplified performance, and the unique floating design of the grand tier assures an even flow of sound to every seat. 
The stage of the venue could be adapted for grand opera, musical and dramatic productions, or for symphony concerts, organ recitals, chamber music recitals, solo performances, and lectures. The remarkable versatility of the stage was enhanced by a collapsible orchestra shell, which, when fully extended, can accommodate a full orchestra, chorus, and pipe organ. The shell is telescoped into a specially designed storage area when not in use. 27 months after the groundbreaking, the stage was set for the grand opening. Tickets to the grand opening event were the most coveted in town. While some tickets were reserved for students and faculty, the remaining tickets for the 3,000 seat hall sold out within 12 hours, nearly unprecedented for anything but a rock concert. The concert for the evening was the Philadelphia Orchestra, under the direction of the legendary Eugene Ormandy. It was a black tie affair with guests donning their best suits, tuxedos, and gowns of chiffon and brocade. Most notable guests included Ogavana Wright and many of Mr. Wright's disciples at Taliesin West, Catherine Gamage and 13-year-old Grady Gamage Jr., as well as many other of the area's elites. Other attendees included Dr. G. Homer Durham, ASU president with his wife, University of Arizona president and Mrs. Richard A. Harville, and Arizona State College at Flagstaff and soon to become Northern Arizona University president and Mrs. Lawrence J. Walkup. Chief Justice of the Arizona Supreme Court and Mrs. Jesse Udall, Board of Regents members including Mr. and Mrs. John Babbitt, Mr. and Mrs. L. Wood Bradford, Vivian Boyden, as well as Mrs. G.R., better known as Cax Herberger, and Mrs. Louise Lincoln Care, who is the namesake of the ASU Care Cultural Center. We sat in the um, second row center of the grand tier when Eugene Ormandy and the Philadelphia Orchestra came um, to dedicate it. And um, I, I, you know, symphony, um, orchestra performances. I don't remember what they played uh, particularly um, these days, but um, Eugene Ormandy was like the top of the heap in those days, the symphony conductors, and he sort of stopped at one point and um, turned to the house and said something about, uh, this is an unbelievable facility. The acoustics are remarkable for, for a symphony, and uh, I'm so glad to be here and dedicate it with you. And uh, my mother started crying. I can't believe how much that still affects me as The first notes christened at the hall at 8.30 p.m. as the much anticipated concert began. Ormandy entered the stage and the orchestra inaugurated the building with the Star Spangled Banner. After the song, Ormandy turned to the audience, smiled and said, beautiful sound. The program continued with Ormandy's orchestra playing Bach's Foscaglia and Fouguet in C minor, Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, and Richard Strauss's Ein Heldenleben. We have been told that during the intermission, the Phoenix Symphony's conductor, Guy Taylor, went backstage to speak with Ormandy and ask, is this the hall where you were rehearsed and perform in? Taylor confirmed this with a nod, and Ormandy said, how I envy you. Ormandy also declared to the audience before leaving the hall, this is the second best hall we've ever performed in. If I told the truth, they'd throw me out of my own hall in Philadelphia. When we build an auditorium today, we have all sorts of equipment. They make models and they have tiny microphones and they go through all of this adjusting. None of that happened for the Gamage Auditorium. Over the years, Many have echoed the sentiments of the hall's near-perfect acoustics, with William Steinberg of the Pittsburgh Orchestra declaring ASU Gamage as the queen of the halls, and legendary soprano Birgit Nielsen affirming with acoustics like this, who needs a voice? As the guests departed in their cars that evening, little did they know that they were part of what would be the first of many memorable events at the historic theater and a night that would live in Arizona history. Over the next 50 years, ASU Gamage would host the world's finest, including many national and international dance companies, including 
Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater, the Boston Ballet, Martha Graham Dance Company, Joffrey Ballet, as well as Bolshoi Ballet. Gamage would also host legendary musicians including B.B. King, Neil Diamond, Dionne Warwick, Bruce Springsteen, Judy Collins, Johnny Cash, Gordon Lightfoot, the new Christy Minstrels, and Elton John. But it was something the hall wasn't specifically designed for that would captivate audiences and become a mainstay of the building's repertory, Broadway. The Valley of the Sun had a taste for Broadway from quality regional theater in the community, but after the first performance of Camelot at ASU Gamage four days after the opening in 1964, that appetite would become insatiable. In ASU Gamage's first 50 years, nearly every significant Broadway tour would play at stage. This includes nine engagements of Cats and Les Miserables, five engagements of Rent and Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Phantom of the Opera, with a sixth engagement of Phantom scheduled for 2015. Multiple engagements of many other shows, including Disney's The Lion King, Annie, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, a chorus line, and Peter Pan, another of ASU Gamage's most popular musicals, also returns for its fourth engagement in 2015, the show that holds the records for the highest gross sales in Tempe, Wicked. Since opening, ASU Gamage has had five executive directors, David Skular from 1964 to 1974, who had the pleasure of opening the hall and presiding over its first 10 years. The next director was Warren Sumners, who presided from 1974 to 1979 and believed that the venue's uniqueness came from the fact that it belonged to all of the people of Arizona. Miriam Beagle led ASU Gamage from 1979 to 1984, and her lasting memory of the venue was its ability to change people and that the experience of the interchange between the artist and the audience helped to make the world a better place. The fourth director, Jim O'Connell, who served from 1984 to 1991, believed the building was an opportunity and there was a huge responsibility to fill it with gems from around the world. In 1992, Colleen Jennings Rogensock took the helm as executive director and established the mission of connecting communities. Jennings Rogensock has artistic, fiscal, and administrative responsibility for ASU Gamage, ASU Care Cultural Center, and with additional responsibility for non-athletic activities at Sun Devil Stadium and Wells Fargo Arena. The organizational mission of connecting communities allowed ASU Gamage to go beyond its doors and stage to change lives for the better and make a difference in our community through the shared experience of the arts. Our mission at ASU Gamage is to connect communities. And we use the word communities, plural, intentionally, because there are a wide range of communities that we serve. And what we find through that mission of connecting communities, we're able to make sure that Gamage is everyone's home, that everyone feels at home here, and that this is a place where the unfamiliar becomes familiar. Through this initiative, ASU Gamage has discovered and created new avenues of communication through the arts to bridge cultural, economic, and geographic divides. Uh, certainly art and culture um, and any community, any civilization probably on a global scale is important. There's the, the hard scientific part of our lives, but it has to be softened and it has to be enriched with culture. And I think one of the most amazing aspects of, of culture is live entertainment. And nowhere else can you find such a focus of high quality culture than you can today as you can. Along with its mission, cultural participation programs were created to take artists' work into classrooms and community organizations so that patrons of all ages and backgrounds can reap the benefits of arts involvement. For young people in particular, these benefits can be profound. Numerous studies have shown that students who are involved in the arts perform better academically, are more involved in community affairs, have higher self-esteem, and better attitudes towards school, and are less likely to drop out. In Arizona, 
More than 134,000 students attend a school without any access to arts instruction, and ASU Gamage provides numerous programs to give K-12 and university students opportunities to experience the arts through artist residencies, teacher development workshops, and curriculum-based programs that meet state arts education standards. Through a long-standing partnership with the Kennedy Center, ASU Gamage brings artist mentors to Valley Schools to work with teachers on integrating visual arts, dance, drama, and music into mathematics, social studies, language arts, and science lessons. By integrating the arts into other core subjects, teachers increase student engagement and make learning more relevant and meaningful. In 2001, ASU Gamage was the first touring Broadway house to host Camp Broadway, a performing arts summer camp for theater-loving kids ages 10 to 17. Camp Broadway gives young people an introduction to Broadway, on stage and behind the scenes. Camp classes include acting, scene study, improvisation, music theory, singing, and dancing. The camp fosters teamwork, discipline, commitment, and support while introducing kids to the world of Broadway and all aspects of putting a show together in a professional, interactive, and theatrical environment. The week-long day camp culminates in a final performance, the family finale. Campers work collaboratively with Broadway's most distinguished performers, writers, and designers, and will have a chance to see a musical and meet the cast and crew. ASU Gamage is giving them the opportunity to say, yes, I can do things. I can attend the university. I can be a success in my life. The camp is intended for kids of all interest. Enthusiasm is the only requirement. No theater experience is needed. Camp Broadway artistic director, Tony Parisi says, we introduce classic Broadway to new generations so that we can keep live theater alive. Broadway has a unique heritage. Around the world, Broadway means a distinctive sense of excitement and magic. It is this one-of-a-kind spirit that drives Camp Broadway. Well, I think it's very critical that we keep bringing younger people into the theater, giving them these opportunities that they can experience what it's like to be on stage, to work with others. Uh, the Camp Broadway program allows them to, to work in a team or as an individual. They learn many different aspects of the theater. That is very critical, I think, because you're, as I said, the, the schools just can't offer this anymore. They're, they're so limited in what they can do. And so anything that Gamage can do to encourage the arts for our young people is still very important. Experiencing art communally with others creates and strengthens social bonds, leading to an increased feeling of trust, mutual understanding, and shared values that are vital for a healthy community. Exposure to the arts can even convey health benefits for people of all ages. One program that accentuates strengthening of social bonds is Journey Home. Since 2001, ASU Gamage has been working with incarcerated women at Australia Jail through Journey Home. The Rehabilitative Arts Outreach Program happens in conjunction with the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office and Life Paradigms, a Phoenix nonprofit that helps women discover and express their worth to benefit themselves and their waiting families. Since 2001, more than 300 inmates have participated in the program. For six weeks prior to a public performance, the inmates meet weekly and go through training in movement, visual arts, creative writing, and storytelling. The intent is to help them build personal skills and self-esteem and demonstrate alternative methods to avert destructive behavior through the arts. The women then begin to see themselves as productive, creative people. ASU Gamage's Journey Home programs culminates in public performances inside the correctional facility. Journey Home is an arts residency program designed to enable incarcerated women to discover a personal sense of constructive identity through performance, visual arts, creative writing, and storytelling. The program originated in 2001 from dancer-choreographer Pat Graney's national program, K-12 
Keeping the Faith, Prison Project. Since that time, ASU Gamage has sustained the event locally. The program has allowed inmates to develop tools to make positive choices and encourage them to break the negative patterns in their life. Very unique in my experience for them to then go beyond just the Performing Arts Center and try to connect community with all the different kinds of things that could flow or imaginatively could flow out of that. And we have programs in female penal institutions to help these uh, ladies who have unfortunately not had the uh, best lives to understand that there's more to them than they maybe thought there was. It would help lift them up. Since 1992, during Jennings Rogensock's tenure, ASU Gamage has commissioned 22 works, which is more than any other presenter in the Southwest. Commissioned artists have included Tricia Brown, Bill T. Jones, and the first North American Commission of Pina Bausch. Our residency work at ASU Gamage, I see as completely intertwined with our mission uh, and serves an invaluable purpose on several levels. It helps keep very compelling and very important creating artists around the world uh, able to continue to create and able to continue to, to fail and succeed in their journey to becoming really amazing artists that contribute to uh, the global artist eco ecosystem and to us locally and to our communities. For an artist uh, developing new work, residencies serve several functions. First it keeps one connected to the creative process in oneself. If you have a career, like I have, that's gone to many, many places, sometimes you lose track of why you make. When you have a uh, partner, like Damage has been to me, uh, it reminds you in a way that your, the work is part of an ongoing discussion, a discourse with the society. Residency also gives you a sense of place. The, we have a large, wonderful country here, but there are some places, like Gamage, like the Walker Arts Center, like Montclair, like Yerba Buena, like Zellerbach, places that have been supporting the work for years, and it gets rid of some of the craziness that artists feel sometimes, that you are only as good as your last performance, and that uh, everything is somehow either atomized or, or broken apart. So, it provides a needed source of inspiration for new works, it provides a sort of context for your creativity, and it settles one as a social being, residency such as here. In 2002, when Dr. Michael Crow took over as president of Arizona State University, he unveiled his model of a new American university. This model, driven by the university charter of creating excellence, access, and impact, and based on the concept that a university should be judged by who they accept, not by whom they exclude, fit well with the mission of connecting communities at ASU Gamage. You know, when you think about Gamage and you think about 50 years of history, of impact on our community and cultural education and cultural learning, it's really tremendous. And when you think about where Arizona State University is in our present evolutionary history, moving forward with the new American University, model, this model of excellence, access, and impact, you might say to yourself, well, how does it all work, or what does it all mean? What I want to talk about a little bit here is just talk a little bit about why Gamage is so critically important to the success of our mission at ASU. We're trying to have as much impact on the community as possible. We're trying to do that with as, in a sense, as constrained a public investment and as constrained a tuition investment as we possibly can. So Gamage, fantastically, has become this financially independent, highly creative, highly dynamic force for direct cultural engagement. Direct engagement through uh, uh, artistic expressions that are brought from other places, uh, homegrown, uh, that evolve and connect with the community in new and exciting uh, ways, but all done in a way where it is self-supporting, all done in a way where it is engaging the community, all done in a way where it's high energy and high engagement and high creativity, all driven by our university's mission. Our mission is excellence, which Gamage stands for. Our mission is access, making sure that people have the ability to gain access to that kind of excellence, which Gamage facilitates, and impact, that is, 
a measured impact on the health and well-being and cultural trajectory of our community. Gamage is that, Gamage sustains that, and Gamage is self-sustaining and needs help to be able to move in that direction. So here we are, 50 years into Gamage's history. It's a powerful force for our community, a powerful force for the success of our community, and at Arizona State University, we're deeply committed to helping Gamage to move forward for its next 50 years. By creating the model for the new American University, ASU altered the trajectory of the university and reevaluated the role that universities play in society, in the economy, and in education at all levels. ASU has a lot of very um, shining examples of excellence in a lot of their colleges, whether it's um, biodesign, their law school, their business school, and again, their arts and culture. I think that uh, it's one of the many examples of excellence and I think it's important again to expose students um, to the arts which also has been shown to improve academic performance. Major changes were required throughout the university and one of those was for ASU Gamage as well as some other university entities needed to be self-funding. ASU Gamage needed to continue to bring many benefits to the community by creating accessibility to artistic expression that captivates us, stirs our emotion, stimulates our intellect, inspires, uplifts, and empowers us. At the same time, ASU Gamage needed to shift to a self-sustaining business model, driven by private support and ticket sales. A performing arts center on a college campus that was self-supporting and something unheard of at the time. To this day, ASU Gamage continues to operate on that model, running like a business, but with the heart of a nonprofit. Jennings Rogensock has also grown ASU Gamage into the largest university based presenters of performing arts in the world. The Broadway Across America Arizona series generates significant dollars beyond the box office. At the building's dedication in 1964, Governor Paul Fannin described ASU Gamage as a cultural center for the entire Southwest and predicted that Gamage would be second only to the Grand Canyon in attracting visitors to the state. The importance of ASU Gamage to the economic vitality of the region is clear and Broadway has become a leading economic engine for Tempe as well as the rest of the valley. Even during some difficult economic times, the series brought in more than a billion dollars and economic impact to the Valley and Arizona from 1992 to 2014. Valley restaurants, hotels, and businesses feel this impact more than anyone. ASU Gamage is one of the gems of Tempe, and it has a huge impact, both because of its cultural offerings that it brings, and certainly the economic impact that it brings to our city. With a wide range of programs and arts disciplines presented, ASU Gamage has created a culturally vibrant and creative community that attracts the brightest and extraordinary employees as well as attracting the businesses of today and tomorrow. I think you could easily say that at the one restaurant, La Boca Pizzeria, that our sales are probably up 20% when there's a good Broadway show in town. Since 1991, hundreds of well-known musicians, performers, and dignitaries come through ASU Gamage including Mary J. Blige, Billy Crystal, Tony Bennett, and Melissa Etheridge. Past artists include icons of dance, Mikhail Baryshnikov, Rudolf Nureyev, Bill T. Jones, and the Bolshoi Ballet, and the pillars of classical music, Vladimir Horowitz, Philip Glass, Yo-Yo Ma, and Itzhak Perlman. Gamage also hosted the 2004 presidential debate, lectures, and symposiums featuring the world's most prominent scientists, authors, dignitaries, politicians, and scholars, including Stephen Hawking, Elie Wiesel, Maya Angelou, and Margaret Thatcher. In addition to the stars and amazing shows that grace its stage, ASU Gamage also has strong ties to our nation's heroes. Each year, ASU Gamage recognizes active military, veterans, and their families and honors them and the great service they do for America. ASU Gamage pioneered the Military Family First Nights program 
that was adapted from a national program created by the Broadway League to bring new audiences to theater. This program brings military families with loved ones serving both here and abroad a chance to see live theater and interact with cast members. Each year, more than 100 family members receive tickets to attend three Broadway performances. At each event, they meet the cast. To date, the Military Family First Nights program allowed these families a chance to build a family tradition around coming to a Broadway show and has provided more than 2,000 tickets. In 2012, ASU Gamage created a new program to honor active duty military, veterans, and their families with the creation of Heroes Night. Heroes Night is dedicated to honoring veterans, active duty military, and their families. The evening includes a pre-show salute from the ASU Gamage stage, patriotic entertainment, and an opportunity for members of military and their families to see a Broadway performance at no cost. One of the things that's so important to me as a military brat is that we can never ever say thank you enough to the men and women who serve our country in the armed forces. We can never say thank you enough for keeping us safe. We can never say thank you enough for sacrificing your own families. So for me, Heroes Night is an incredible way to say thank you, but it is a pay it forward because my father served, I get the opportunity to recognize him in every action we do, although he is no longer with us, to recognize my mother as we, as we recognize every military family for the sacrifice they make. And as a community, we get to say thank you on Heroes Night, and we get to say that you're important and you're not forgotten. So it is an extraordinary gift that ASU Gamage gets to give to our active duty military, to our veterans military, and to those people who work with, we honored one year, our military working dogs, and our people who work with service animals who help our veterans, who help our active duty military, and now are helping our veterans to recover. For ASU Gamage, it is important to have a special night each season to recognize these brave men, women, and children who make sacrifices every day to ensure our freedom. Since its inception, Heroes Night has hosted more than 1,500 military family members. Additionally, ASU Gamage also partners with Veterans Upward Bound at ASU. This local chapter is dedicated to fully developing the personal potential of all U.S. military veterans. ASU Gamage, through its partnerships, provides veterans in Upward Bound with tickets to each and every Broadway show. Since 2010, ASU Gamage has also worked with Vet Ticks to allow even more military service members and their families to attend shows. ASU Gamage, it's a place with a big heart. It's rare in the community of performing arts to have an organization that has the time and talent and generosity to invest in the community around them. A lot of people didn't know Grady Gamage. I knew him as a student. My first couple years on the staff, I knew him. And he was a great builder and a great educator. So when I think of Grady Gamage, I tell people, well, I consider Gamage to be a shrine. It's just that important to my university and to my area, to my state. It really is. But I also think of Grady, the educator, the wonderful builder of this university. We've done so much in the last several years, but gosh, he took over a little state teacher's college and he brought it to university status. And he fought for a vote of the people of Arizona to name it a university, which some people today don't realize. But he was a fighter for this university, a builder. I think it's important that we remember the man after whom Gamage is named. ASU Gamage creates a measurable impact on the cultural trajectory of the valley and has changed so many people's lives through the experiences created in the community as well as the performances that have graced its stage. There's probably not a day goes by that I don't reflect on something about Gamage or what has happened there 
Um, something will be said. I will see something. Um, and I, I will sit for minutes at a time sometimes, just thinking back. You know, I, I don't like living in the past, but but sometimes I find myself doing that on a day-to-day -day basis. And so it's it's been such a close, uh, integral part of my life that it's hard to actually separate myself from it. To ensure ASU Gamage remains a valley icon for another 50 years and beyond, a 50th anniversary advisory board has been established to work with the staff to help secure the future of ASU Gamage. What's really important is that people have stepped up. So we have our 50th leadership board, which is a great board of individuals who've made a commitment to help us raise $15 million to improve the physical plant and improve programming at ASU Gamage. But what we also have are individuals who've come on board as our VIPs. They've said, we believe in what you do. We believe in cultural participation and education. We believe in the art form that you have there. We believe in commissioning. So we're gonna write a check and we're gonna become Gamage VIPs to make sure this work continues. Likewise, we have visionary businesses in and throughout Arizona who said, we believe in what you do. We believe in you make this community a better place. You make Arizona State University a better university. So we too are going to join in partnership. Ticket sales alone do not support the arts. It is about partnership and working towards a future together. Gadget is doing some major lifting in building the future. Building, building future audiences and building in some ways cultural citizens. What makes you a cultural citizen? When you have gone through some sort of rigorous course of encountering work, digesting work, passing work along, making the way for other people to have the experience you just had. Gambage is a leader in that. Uh, so my work has been deeply, deeply affected by having this sort of support. Frank Lloyd Wright's widow, Olga Vanna, exclaimed that Gamage would be significant for centuries to come. If this building is maintained, she pronounced, it will remain forever young.